Bear with me. <laughs> All right. Get rid of this one. That one's gone. And we're live. All right, if you're in the chat, if someone's in the chat, just write something for me so I know we're working. I'm having some technical difficulties here. I think. Looks like we might be good. Okay, here we go. Sorry, bear with me. I'm just going to share this on the, on the Twitterverse. Oh my Lord. All right, we're good. We're good. Bear with me here, folks. Bear with me. We're in the we're in the biggest board. And we're drafting as we speak. All right. All right. Let's go. We're in. It filled. That was quick. A little surprising. It was down to six. We needed six and it filled in about half hour <laughs> where was this last time we tried to we tried to draft hey eh? All right. Good enough. Let's go. Okay. We're live. So started, we got the two, we started CD lamb. I'm excited to share my strategy with these. And this will be a little bit different. I think this will be a little different than the other drafts that I've done, but I'll go through my other two bullets. Uh, this being obviously my third and final bullet in the biggest board. So, uh, we'll go through this one. Then I'll share my, go through my other two drafts, walk through it. Maybe after this, we'll do a biggest board or sorry, a big board, just a regular big board, just to, to keep it going. Cause it got a little away from us there, but I'm excited. We're drafting. I didn't expect it to fill so fast. That was, that was a little shocking. We, we streamed live for two hours last week trying to fill one. And then this sucker fills in half an hour with six spots. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, we'll have to talk. Like I said, I'll try to get in. I'll try to do a big board after this. And between, we'll chat about the, the Stefan Diggs trade and uh, some other rookie chat quickly. But this is going to be the focus. We're doing the biggest board, $100 entry. We're going back to back in a second here. So we'll dig into the, uh, the breakdown of the tournament in a second here uh, after we make these two picks. Um, CD Lamb, second overall. Happy with that. Might be a little bit different than my other two. Like I said, I'll show those. So we'll do that in the in-between. And then, uh, like I said, we'll do a biggest board. Or sorry, a big board. Jeez. We'll do a big board after this biggest board. Um, hoping it's HN. It's not. Okay. Um, now, now, what do I do here? I'm not, I'm not going to go Josh Allen. And I am going to go with, I am going to go Brand Nayuk. I'm going to go Brand Nayuk and I think DJ Moore here, if he's there. 
if he's there. I could just double bang it with Debo, which I might as well. We'll see, especially DJ Moore's gone. Um, I could bring up Josh Jacobs, but I really would rather not. That's too much for me. If I believed in Josh Jacobs more, if this was if this was Derrick Henry, you know, area, I would bring up Derrick Henry in this case. So it's Debo or DJ Moore. Um, I have a little list of guys that I will not draft because I have them in both my other two biggest board bullets. Uh, but neither of these guys are on that list. So I'm going to go Debo. And then that's obviously going to set up some San Francisco action. So we'll get there in a second. But let's dig into this. Big S board. We're in the big S board. $100 entry. I love this. this is my final bullet. Three entry tournament. I've already done two. We'll go over both those teams after this draft. Um, 81.5% filled, 1,300 out of 1,600. Three max, like I said, this is my third. 20 Gs up top. That's pretty nice. I love the, the advance rates here. 4 of 12, 2 of 8, 2 of 8, 34 seat final. That'd be a nice sweat if you can get in here. Uh, fingers crossed, obviously. Um, yeah. Biggest board, third bullet, super excited, super shocked it filled so fast, but I'm happy. Um, Vapor, what's up, man? Good to see you. Putt Daddy. Of course, I have Alan Digstack, one of my biggest board drafts. That's that's unfortunate. I mean, pretty well, like I said, after this draft, we'll talk about it uh, more extensively. Um, I have Josh Allen in both of my other biggest boards. I'll go over those, like I said, my other two drafts, and I want to I want to dig into my strategy. Um, because and actually I'm happy that this draft is going the way it is so far. Three straight wide receivers, because my other two drafts are not like that at all. And that was more my strategy. But again, I'll dig into it uh once we finish this draft and I'll show you those other two rosters and kind of how I was attacking these tournaments. Um, but this this roster so far is going to be very, very different, which I'm happy for. You don't want every roster to be the same. Like I said, I have a list of uh, a few players over here that I have on both of my other biggest board teams, and I will not, period, I will not draft them on this team. Um, I just don't want to have exposure to on all three rosters with these certain players, even though I like them. But um, yeah, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate, man. So that, that was a that was a surprise trade. Um, <clears throat> we're live. Cheers, little rosé for a, for a Wednesday evening. If you don't like rosé, you can't be friends, man. Sorry, but it's good stuff. All right. So, surprise, surprise trade for sure. Um, I was telling a buddy of mine, good friend of mine, a few months back. Just uh, kind of after the just after the season ended, sort of thing. I was like, man, I really think I should. I was looking at the rosters, looking at the defenses, especially. Well, the defense of this team, the the Texans, obviously, is really what got me thinking about it. Offensive lines in a good spot. Offense was obviously in a pretty good spot. It's the coaching staff I really like. But I was talking to my bu my buddy, a guy I talk football a lot with, uh, you know, on a daily basis almost. And I said, man, I should really throw some really, really thinking about throwing some money on the Texans to win the Super Bowl, you know, this next year. Didn't do it like an idiot. And now here we are. And man, I wish I threw a little, just a little salt bay sprinkle on the on the Texans there before this this trade came through. Cause now their their odds are gonna kind of skyrocket. And, and just you know, justifiably, they bring in Joe Mixon, they bring in Daniil Hunter, they bring in uh um Stefan Diggs, obviously today. So their, their odds are going to skyrocket. This is a very nice looking team, obviously very well coached. And that's exactly what you got to do. A um, couple things, a couple things about this trade. Um, number one, they're obviously going all in, which you should. So rookie quarterback or, you know, sorry, rookie quarterback contract, right? As soon as you know, you got a guy, which I think we can all agree CJ Stroud is absolutely a guy. I'm not so sure he should be drafted where he is in, in big boat. Well, and now, and now it's fine. 
uh, and he's already gone. Oh, geez. Someone's already just drinking the Kool-Aid. Tenth overall. Oh, my God. I wasn't even paying attention. I was scrambling, trying to do other things, trying to get this going, trying to get this live stream off the ground. Tenth overall and then 15th with Dak. Is this going to get – I don't think that's enough to get uh, deleted. Pack 7504. CJ, Dak, Kincaid, Schultz. If this gets fucking deleted, I'm going to be really upset. I didn't even notice that. Drake London in the first round. What the, what are we doing? Drake London in the first round. Interesting. Huh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's enough to get this, this deleted. This might, I don't know. CJ Stroud in the first, Dak, Kincaid, Schultz. Whew. Should be done at both quarterback and tight end, but we're going to make these picks and assume that this doesn't get deleted. Um, where are we at here? Where are we at? So with Diggs Diggs trade, even though... I don't particularly want to draft this player. Um, I'm going to go with James Cook if he's there. Obviously, with this Diggs trade, he catches a lot of balls in the Joe Brady offense. 44 catches last year. 210 fantasy points. Six touchdowns. Almost 1,600 or right at 1,600 yards. I think he goes up from there. We're going to go James Cook here. Again, even though I would I, it would have been tough not to take Lamar, but we'll go James Cook, um, and then take it from there. Let's see what happens. Roma Dunze staring me in the face. Everybody knows how much I like Roma Dunze, but I like Trey uh, Trey McBride here, and that might be where I go. Probably will be where I go. I could have I could have went for the KC stack there, get Travis Kelsey, get uh, Patrick Mahomes, but I just don't think that. I think that we could see this drop even, or at least you know right here, stay right here for Travis Kelsey stats wise. I think they just want to keep him fresh for this three peat. Roman Dunze goes nice pick. We got to go through this uh, first round again. That was a little wild. Drake London, first round. CJ Stroud, first round. First round, CJ Stroud. That's that's madness. That's absolute madness. I don't know if that's enough to get this deleted. That would really, really, really suck. I'd be really unhappy if this gets deleted. Big waste of time. I am going to go Trey McBride here. So Christian McCaffrey, I went CD Lamb, Tyreek Hill. Jamar Chase, Bijan, Jefferson, Brees Hall, Amon Ra. No one's getting out of line. That all makes sense. These two right here, Drake London and CJ Stroud. Stefan Diggs. Why don't you go Diggs? If you go Stroud in the first round, why don't you bring it back with Diggs? And then you, you reach for Schultz. Like what, what's going on here? And then he goes Tank Dell. What what is going on here? And this guy goes Kincaid. I'm confused with uh K Genter. K Genter, I guess. I don't know. And Pax 7504. Red badge, so I would expect normalcy out of that. And then he doesn't get a line. Well, real, I mean, Drake London, okay. And he's clearly not getting out of line with Stefan Diggs, Tank Dell. But it just doesn't make sense to go that route when CJ Stroud's off the board. It also doesn't make sense to, for, for this guy to not go with Stefan Diggs here instead of Dak Prescott. Why are you going QB, QB, tight end, tight end? I'm really interested to see how these next few picks for, for this for the 10 hole goes. I'd be really, really upset if this gets deleted. It's just such a waste of time and a real kick in the nuts. 
That's frustrating. So we went Derek Henry. I'm curious, what are you doing here? Hopefully it's normal. Don't get out of line. But my bigger concern is uh, this 10 hole here. He goes Patrick Mahomes, George Kittle. Like, what are we doing? I think this is going to get deleted now. Fuck sake. <laughs> I'm, I, I mean, I don't know what this, I guess there's, there's, there's maximums. And I don't know if he's reaching far enough to get this deleted. I don't know. That's super frustrating. Super frustrating. I don't know. This is the one, the Schultz pick realistically is the one that, that really could get this thing deleted. I don't know. I don't know. That's really frustrating. I think he's maxed out. If anyone knows in the chat, I think he's maxed out at four tight ends. Or is it six? Is this what he's doing now? He's he's just I don't know. I don't know. Why would you why would you waste time like this? Then he goes Anthony Richardson. So it's clear that he's fucking around, regardless of if this gets deleted or not. He's still uh, just a menace. Three QBs, three tight ends. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? Pax, 7504. What a guy. Jumps into a $100 tournament just to piss around and maybe get it deleted. Waste everybody's time. Fuck. This is really annoying. <laughs> This is really, really annoying. I really hate this kind of stuff. I really, really, really hate this kind of stuff. I hope I hope Underdog just bans people one time. You get one shot. And if you do something like this, you're just banned. That's it. I don't know. We'll see if this gets deleted or not. This is really annoying. Five Ted tight ends in all contests. So we'll see. I think it's four QBs. Is that what it is? Um, cause this guy has gone three and three so far. So I don't know. We'll see. Fucking pain in the ass. Uh, what are we going to do here? I do like, uh, we definitely got to bring in Purdy at some point, as long as this crazy guy doesn't take just all the QBs. Now I'm super happy. I went, I, you can Debo not being able to get. Um, George Kittle because of this Yahoo uh, won't be taking Purdy now uh, would have probably went Kyle Pitts there um, Kamara staring me in the face I like this NFC uh, type of a you know building out your NFC teams just in case you get some correlation. Obviously, I have an AFC running back here. But let's bring in Alvin Kamara. I'm happy with that. And then it's either going to be David Montgomery or no. Yeah, David Montgomery. I'm going to take a man. I don't want to take a risk on this tight end situation. Yeah, it must be nice just to burn a hundred dollars. Hopefully, like now, I actually, yeah, I hope it doesn't get um deleted and this guy just pays the rake. God, that's frustrating. Um I'm going to take a risk on Deon, Deontay, Deontay Johnson here. Like I said, just keep building. I'm going to keep building out this NFC side a little bit. Um, five QBs and four and 18s. That's right. So it's five. Oh my God. I think it's what five tight ends. Yeah. So five and five. He could just build out five quarterbacks, five tight ends, and completely screw this draft. So that's awesome. Obviously, we got to keep an eye on this Yahoo. 
regardless of like wasting the money, like if it gets deleted, he's going to get the money back. And then it's just a waste of time for everybody. And here we are doing a stream, trying to stream and show my strategy. Like it's a waste of time for me and for, you know, hopefully you don't see it as a waste of time watching this, but it's a real pain in the ass. <sighs> yeah, I hit him with the gritty. Just just tweeted something about this uh, this draft we're doing right now. Appreciate that. Yeah, man. No, I'm not going to leave. I'm obviously not going to leave. Um, hit him with the gritty. I don't know if you guys know him. He's in lots of lots of drafts. I've, dra I've drafted with him. I'm sure anybody who's drafted on Underdog has drafted with uh, hit him with the gritty. Um, good follow on Twitter. I follow him. Um, just just commented on my my post. Yeah, I wish I like I I wish they would do something and just just like you said, if they're gonna cancel it, just kind of flag it. I assume you're watching the the stream while we're doing this too. I wish they would kind of just flag it and uh, yeah, if they're gonna cancel it, just snap can cancel it sort of thing. Um, we'll see what he does right here. Obviously, he's got two picks coming up right now. Man, if he goes QB and and tight end again, then it's just like fuck, man. Okay, he goes running back. Maybe it's some sort of crazy strategy. He's trying, I guess. Like I said, I don't know if I don't know if uh and like uh hit him with the gritty was saying there, like definitely I'm, I won't leave the draft. I won't not draft like it is gonna be fine. It, you know, I am gonna be it is gonna be a tournament because realistically it's really close, you know, especially with the trade today you know, with CJ Stroud and then Schultz, like the only one that's really out of, out of whack as far as, uh, as far as, um, ADP stretching is concerned is this Dalton Schultz pick here. Everything else is, it's bad. And, you know, I wouldn't recommend making those selections, but I don't know if it's bad enough to get the draft deleted. And then he goes to running backs, like, yeah, maybe it's just a weird strategy, right? stupid strategy and uh he's paying the rake so i hope this doesn't get deleted now now that i see that he's not just going you know tight end quarterback and uh he's paying the rake so you know basically it's four of 11 now you know are gonna move on so we'll just keep an eye on it and uh keep drafting like this is gonna be a a, a tournament so or, or uh, a pod, right? And just keep drafting that way and cross our fingers. Hit him with the clay, the, the, hit him with the clay pool. I think that's because he has a lot of, I believe he's got a lot of uh, exposure to Chase clay, clay pool, which you never know. You certainly never know in these early drafts. You know, it's not a waste to take a stand like that on the 19th, 20th round because they're, you know, free picks if you look at it that way. Um, as opposed to a, a, an 18 round, you know, best ball mania or regular best ball season where it goes back to only 18 picks instead of the 20 during uh, uh, big board season. So I'd say, I say pick whoever the hell you want, especially late, you know, and take a stand. If that, if that really hits, then there you go. You know, Tank Dell, I was doing that a lot with Tank Dell uh, last year and it worked out for me until he got hurt. But uh, here we are. So, Starts off James Cook. I got Alvin Kamara. I'm a little rattled. I'm not sure I would have taken Deontay Johnson here, but I don't mind it. I don't have him on my other rosters. And again, I'm trying to, you know, if there's a tiebreaker, I'll stick to the NFC and um, roll it out that way. But only if it's a tiebreaker and only if it makes sense. Um, so with what we're doing here, obviously one of these two picks has to be Brock Purdy, unless I get sniped for no good reason, which you never know. Um, 
I don't think this guy goes Brock Purdy with McCaffrey. That just wouldn't really make sense. The pick that I wanted and I was hoping would fall back to me is David Njoku here. And now that he's here, I can't not take him. So I have to kind of just dare this guy. If he really wants to take Brock Purdy on me, then so be it. Um, and now I'm done at tight end, which if you watch the show, you know that's a strategy of mine anyways, but it's even more so in these uh, these biggest boards. I really only want two tight ends and that is it. And I want them to be relatively elite. And I think both of these guys are. Wow, he goes, Chris, I was not expecting Caleb Williams. So glad I can still get Brock Purdy here. There we go. Build on a little uh, San Francisco stack. I got Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, Brock Purdy, uh, NFC, running back Alvin Kamara, NFC, NFC, David and Joker in the AFC. That's fine. James Cook in the AFC. That's fine. Again, only if it's a tiebreaker am I uh, going NFC. But, and it kind of was right there for when I did select uh, Deontay Johnson. So, where was he here? I uh, could have went Chris Godwin, but I'm not a big Chris Godwin believer this year. I know a lot of people are, you know, he's moving back to the slot, that whole thing. Um, but I, I kind of felt like he lost a step a little bit last year. I don't think it was just because he was, you know, playing out of position, if you will. Um, I think he just kind of lost a step a little bit and maybe he just didn't have quite the connection with uh, Baker Mayfield field that he had with uh, Tom Brady, which you can understand. Um I'm not, I'm not as much of a believer. So in this instance, that, that is a tiebreaker for me. Mind you, they're both in the NFC for sure, but I'm taking Deontay Johnson over Chris Godwin personally. Um, so realistically, that was the only difference there. You know, Jackson Smith and Jigba, and then uh, um, DeAndre Hopkins for sure, AFC wide receiver. That was the tiebreaker really for me was Deontay Johnson over DeAndre Hopkins. Um, you know, quarterback play, all things being equal, maybe. Um, I'm, I'm okay with that. Again, I don't have them on either of my other two rosters. Like I said earlier, I'll show both those rosters, go over my strategy, um, which is different from what I'm doing right now, which I'm happy about. I want it to be different. So I'm done at tight end, Trey McBride, David and Joku. Let's see what this guy does. Another running back. Interesting. So he's going hyper fragile, zero wide receiver. Interesting way to build a team period, let alone in a, in a hundred dollar buy-in tournament. But what do I know? <laughs> what do I know? It's interesting. I don't, I, I now, honestly, I don't think this will get deleted. I don't think it will. And I hope it doesn't. I kind of like my, I like my team. I like my, the way it's building out. And I, there's a dead roster spot here, or sorry, a dead, uh, a dead team. First, first wide receiver, Cortland Sutton. I'm all right with that. If he got more out of line and was like drafting players, you know, throughout these picks here that had zero ADP, weren't being drafted, shit like that, then I would say this is definitely getting deleted and this is a waste of time. And I would probably leave. Um, but the way it's going now is, it's, I, I think we'll be all right. And he's just going to have a shit team and a dead team. So thanks. <laughs> thanks, Pax. That's, uh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, 4 of 11 now. That's all I got to do. That's all I got to do, 4 of 11. So sweet. Thanks for that. Uh, what do you want to do here? Done at tight end, like I said. Uh, Trey McBride, David Njoku. Uh, where? Oh, where? Okay, getting thin at quarterback. Starting to get thin at quarterback. Oh, yeah. What do I want to do? Where can I bring it back? Would have been nice to get Kyler on this team. Another NFC running back. And I like them right now, especially huge drop ADP wise. Give me some Brian Robinson. I like that. And I have another pick in mind. Kalushakir moves up. 
I I genuinely think that Troy Frank Troy Franklin, even though I don't love him uh, as a prospect, it's not that I don't love him. Sorry, or, or I don't love him. I like him, but he's gonna be very. I think he's very boomer bust. Like he he could be, you know, the next in this instance, especially with where I think he might go. Like he could be the next Stefan Diggs type. Mind you, they're they're actually different players, but I think he could get drafted by the Buffalo Bills. I really do. Even before this trade, I, I I'm starting to get into my mock draft mode and uh, building out some some mock drafts. I'm not releasing anything because I only do one. I only release one mock draft, which I will be doing uh, about a week or so, ten days maybe before the draft. But I just, you know, did a practice run, whatever you want to call it, ran through it, uh, looked at, you know, who's visiting, who's met with who, blah, blah, blah. There's some linkage there between Troy Franklin and the Buffalo Bills. So he could very well end up as a Buffalo Bill, 28th overall. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to think, and now with this trade, even more so, um, I'm starting to think that Troy Franklin could be a, a Buffalo Bill this year. So I like that pick there. Um, and I'm fine if he is with J James Cook here. There's, the, I'm, I'm perfectly fine having two unstacked Buffalo Bills. That's obvious. Um, there's a lot of teams that you can do that with, where you just take the two, you know, two scorers from a high-powered offense, and uh, it doesn't matter if they're correlated or stacked. Even if I didn't get Brock Purdy, it's not the end of the world, right? Like it's not the end of the world having Brandon Ayuk and, and Debo Samuel on your roster. So. We'll see how this shakes out, but I got a lot of potential correlation. Um, you know, as long as San Francisco and Dallas play this year, that could be a, a, a playoff matchup. Obviously, um, with um, uh, Washington and Dallas, that could be a thing. New Orleans, uh, Carolina. There's a lot of NFC connections here. I could, I could get, I could stumble into some correlation here, uh, and we'll see how it shakes out. But. Um, Josh Downs, yeah, I don't, I don't think this is gonna get deleted now. It's just annoying a little bit, but not really. It's gonna work out for me, I think, to be honest. So if you're just tuning in, we're doing a biggest board right now. Uh, that's what we're in right this second. I'll do a big board after this, but we'll have some conversation in between. Um, I'm gonna go through my other bullets in this in this tournament, talk about my my strategy on those, and sort of where I was at on here, but it's starting to thin out. Um, at the positions I was focusing on those other two tournaments. Um, but like I said, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there in a minute here. I do need to start thinking about quarterback, which is really getting, it's really getting interesting with this draft. But mind you, you know, it's lying season and we're, what are we? Three weeks from the draft right now. So we're going to hear everything. Every player is attached to every team right now. Um, obviously, Caleb Williams going first overall to Chicago. We can mark that down with a Sharpie. But after that, again, it's just lying season. So don't believe really anything you hear right this second. And much like last year, we didn't even know that CJ Stroud was going to be number two overall. I was saying the entire time he should have been number one overall. There's no chance in the world I would have taken Bryce Young over CJ Stroud. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't take anyone over Jane Daniels this year, but that could get thrown for a loop too. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, definitely need every position but tight end, essentially. Starting to get thin at quarterback which is a little concerning. Um, I really would have not minded Jalen right there. I don't think I would mind Charbonnet. Couple picks past ADP. Uh, Drake May has just moved into the betting favorite from what I've heard for number two overall, whether that's Washington or not. Um, personally, I don't think Washington trades out of that spot. You really can't. You have to just stick and draft the the quarterback period that you love. For me, it's Drake May or for me, it's Jaden Daniels, but with man, I kind of want to go. I don't really want to actually, but 
I'm going to pull an audible here. I'm not going to go. Oh, crap. I didn't want Marvin Mims. I have him on my other two teams, but that's fine. I did, I was thinking about going Jahan Dotson and Drake May based off that news, but I really, for me, I'm not, I'm, I just don't think they pass up on Jane Daniels. Maybe they do, maybe they don't, but that's not the direction I wanted to go with this anyways. I do like, I do like Marvin Mims a lot. Again, I have him now on all three of my, my biggest board rosters. Um, I should have not done that, but here we are. Um, and it's starting to get thin at running back, but I really have to hit quarterback here. And I think I'm just going to go with uh, everybody's favorite quarterback, Deshaun Watson here, pair him up with David Njoku. Super risky with Deshaun Watson this year. I have a fair amount of exposure to him, but the big problem I have with Deshaun Watson and the big problem anyone should have with Deshaun Watson the biggest, the big problem that the Browns should have with Deshaun Watson is he's already getting paid no matter what happens, no matter what happens, fully guaranteed, guaranteed contract. He's going to get paid no matter what, whether he plays or not. You think he doesn't know that, right? Like you think he, it takes a special kind of drive and like uh, the type of player I would give a fully guaranteed contract is Tom Brady that played till he was well past, you know, his quote fingers prime. Um, even though he won a Super Bowl in his second last year, right? But that's the type of player that I want to give a fully guaranteed contract to, you know, not a guy like Deshaun Watson. I don't know, like one of the worst contracts in the history of the NFL, and I don't think anyone would dispute me on that, right? So there's a lot of risk with Deshaun Watson this year. He knows he doesn't have to play. He knows he doesn't have to do shit. He's going to make hundreds of millions of dollars regardless of anything. Good play, bad play, plays, doesn't play, doesn't matter. Injured, not injured, whatever. Nothing fucking matters. He's going to get paid. So it's a lot of risk there, but I just drafted him. So there you go. <laughs> um Marvin Mims, I, I really like. I just think he has an opportunity to be the, the wide receiver one on that team. Bad team. They're going to have to throw a lot. They're going to lose a lot of ball games. Um, I, I like Marvin Mims a ton last year. Obviously, he just didn't get opportunity, which Sean Payton came out and you know agreed with and acknowledged that basically he and they were the reason that he didn't get the opportunity last year. So hopefully he does. Uh, this year, um, another tight end for Pax. So he's almost maxed out. <laughs> he's at four tight ends. So that's interesting. Need watching step step up because I got Ford, Cooper, Judy Stack, my Allen Diggs draft. Yeah, man. I, I mean, I've got a fair amount of, of Deshaun Watson too. Like, there's just tons of value on what he could be, you know, what he used to be. And he's still young enough and talented enough to be as long as, you know, he cares really like, is he competitive? Does he want to be that guy? I don't know. Honestly, I, I don't know. I'm drafting him like he does, you know, I'm hoping he does. Uh, obviously they're bringing in Jameis Winston and Tyler Huntley, former pro bowler, <laughs> Tyler Huntley. Um, so they're not a hundred percent sure anymore on that either, but they're certainly hoping that he is. Uh, done at tight end still. That's good. I really would not have minded Tyler Algier there just as a backup. Uh, I'm not going to take Kendra. I'm not about this Rico Dowdle life personally. Um, I know there's a fair amount of people on Rico Dowdle saying he's the only running back on the roster. I don't, I don't care if he is the only running back on the roster. It's just not that good. If I'm wrong about that, oh no, <laughs> that's all right. I'll be okay on that one. Uh, Ricky Pearsall is where I'm going to go here. Another rookie wide receiver. I really don't love how I'm getting boxed out at running back here, but it kind of just is what it is. 
I'm going to have to take some rookies here. Bucky Irvin, Ray Davis, Roderick Estime, take some rookies and hope that uh, uh, they can help me out. So Ricky Pearsall, I need another quarterback. Let's go like this. Get rid of tight end. I think, I think I have to go Derek Carr here, which I don't love at all. But I have to get a, 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 another quarterback. <sighs> yeah, I don't love it. I don't love it. It's it's between Bryce Young, obviously, and, and Derek Carr here. I just have to believe that Dennis Allen's going to protect Derek Carr for another year. Who knows if Taysom Hill will still be there? It's a good possibility he ends up in Denver, obviously. Um, and I mean, even if he just does exactly what he did last year, like Brock Purdy is going to be my guy. I just need all three of these quarterbacks to do something for me. Obviously, I got a little mini stack with Kamara. Plan on bringing it back with At Perry, who I who I like as well. Um, Yeah. So two, two, two players on this team that I've drafted that are now on all three of my biggest board rosters, James Cook and Marvin Mims Jr. Really don't love the Marvin Mims here. I should have went regardless. I didn't want Jahan Dotson either because of the Brian Robinson pick. That's not a team that I want to have multiple players in the offense without the quarterback. And if it is with the quarterback, I would rather have uh, Austin Eckler, Jahan Dotson, Terry McLaurin, you know, guys like that. And we don't know who the quarterback's going to be. I think it'll be Jane Daniels. Maybe it's Drake May. Maybe it's JJ McCarthy, right? So it's a little, little tough to project there. Um, so that's another reason why I, I kind of like the Derek Carr pick here because I know he's going to be the quarterback of the uh, New Orleans Saints. So another two quarterbacks for our buddy Pax here in the 10 hole. He's maxed out at five quarterbacks now. So that's interesting. Justin Fields, sure. Drake May. So that's another reason why it's good to have. What are we looking at for quarterbacks wise? Like what does everyone else have? Because Guys are going to get locked out. Yeah, look at the seven hole here. Aaron Rodgers and Baker Mayfield. I'll take my three over those two, obviously. Um, Jalen Hurts, just one quarterback here. Jaden Daniels and Kyler Murray, that's it. So this is a definitely a wild card. <laughs> <laughs> this draft is obviously a wild card for sure. Um, Josh Allen, Caleb Williams. I like that. Obviously with having Josh Allen. Now I wish I did go Josh Allen uh, right here. Just because of how the rest of this draft is playing out with this Yahoo in the 10 hole. But it is what it is. Uh, we're done at quarterback. We need some running back help. I think I uh, one or two wide receivers max. Um, does he only have two wide receivers? Yeah, he does. He does. I am going to go probably with Malachi Corley here, or I just double tack, double tap running back probably with Bucky Irving, who I don't particularly love, but I might just be completely wrong on. And Audric Estime, I guess. No, I don't need to do that. But I can go Bucky Irving here. And then I'm probably going to go Damian Pierce, actually. Um, with what just this trade that just happened with the, the Texans. I think we got to move Damian Pierce up a little bit. Nothing crazy, but he's he's you know now more valuable in that offense. If so something should happen to Joe Mixon, then and, and, you know, Joe Mixon has been around a long time, a lot of tread on the tires, that sort of thing. Do I think he's going to come in and be some three down workhorse? No, but 
you know, 207, 17th round. He deserves to move up to, I don't know, the, you know, 170 range, maybe 180s for sure. So I'll, I'll take Damian Pierce here as the handcuff to Joe Mixon. Touchdown upside if there's a, an injury there. So let's go. Let's go, Damian Pierce. I got to catch up at running back as well. Um, yeah, he does only have two wide receivers, so um, I'm not sure. And it's Cortland Sutton, Josh Downs. Like again, it's a wasted spot, but I I don't know if I don't think this will be de deleted. I really, really don't. So I'm I'm drafting like it's it's gonna go. Um, because I think it will. The only thing, again, I've said it a couple of times, the only thing that really scares me that might do it is this Dalton Schultz pick. But with the trade happening and him taking CJ Stroud first overall or first round, I I don't know. I don't know. So we'll see. I'm just going to keep drafting like it's going to happen. Three more picks. I don't particularly love this team. Um, but obviously crazy things are going to happen when you know there's nonsense in the draft. And there's certainly nonsense in this draft. Um, and most of my kind of reps, if you will, for this tournament, I think both my picks were uh, four and five, five and six, something like that. Uh, so a couple picks different. Um, so typically I was going either, you know, RB wide receiver or maybe RB, RB. I can't remember. Like I said, we'll go through it in a second here as soon as these drafts are, this draft is done here. But, um, it kind of changed the way I was looking at things. Mind you, I don't mind. I don't mind my team. I don't mind how it looks. Uh, starting to get a little boxed out at running back, but I I have caught up and I think I can continue to catch up. Three more picks. Probably have to go two more running backs and one wide receiver. Pretty top heavy with my first three picks being wide receivers. Yeah, and I'm just, I, I feel like I'm just too thin at running back. I definitely feel like I'm too thin at running back. So I got to go three, seven, eight, two is going to be my build on this. Um, I can't remember exactly what my other builds were, but like I said, we'll go through those in a second and talk more about, more about my strategy because this is not the strategy that I was trying to go with uh, with this tournament. Again, not a problem because this team is very different than my other two. So that's good. I want that, right? I want it to be different. Uh, eight picks away. I would definitely, most definitely like to get uh, Tank Bigsby here. And to be honest, if I could do it, probably Tank Bigsby in Israel about a Canada. They just make the most sense. And then probably A.T. Perry to finish it up. That's uh, pretty straightforward, I feel like, if as long as I can uh, make that happen. I got to get a little more for Derek Carr here. Single stack, uh, Deshaun Watson with David Njoku tight end, which is fine. And then double stack San Francisco with Brock Purdy. There goes Bigsby, not the end of the world. Um, Shipley could be on the table here. AJ Dillon could actually be on the table here. Yeah, I don't want to scroll too down for for uh, running back. There goes Shipley. AJ Dillon over Zeke. Really interesting. I might take my first Zeke share here. I think this is my first Zeke share period, which is kind of funny. And I think I will take AJ Dillon. <laughs> Can't do it. Can't do it. Um, Matt LaFleur came out talking about needing two, two running backs and AJ Dillon's still the number two running back there. They might draft one. Yeah. But Dallas might draft three, you know, Enrico Dowdo did come back. Uh, we're going to go Izzy here. And then wrap it up with A.T. Perry. I think that's my first A.J. Dillon share, actually. Period. 
and I take him in a hundred dollar, a hundred dollar tournament. Um, but I have another, another player that I took only, I only have one share of, and I took him in a hundred dollar, another one of these, uh, biggest boards. And that was Adam Thielen. And we'll go through that in a second. Um, only time I took Adam Thielen, but it made sense for my build. So I'll show you that one in a second. And then we'll do another big board just for shits and gigs while we're here. Might as well. One more pick. We're definitely going wide receiver. This guy's got four wide receivers. Cortland Sutton, Josh Downs, Noah Brown, and Jermaine Burton. Now that's a free square right there. Five quarterbacks, four tight ends, four wide receivers, maybe a fifth with his last pick, which is pretty sad, but whatever. Yeah, that's an interesting one. As long as this draft goes through, which I think it will, Okay. Interesting. Ben Sinat, Kendrick Bourne. You actually see a lot of more a lot more kind of oddball names in these hundred dollar tournaments for some some reason. I'm not sure why. People have their takes, I guess. And uh, you know, they kind of stick to them. But again, I I have Two players where I have one share total out of 150 drafts. I have one share, and it's both in these hundred dollar, you know, drafts. So that's yeah, I guess that's how she goes. KJ Osborne, Tutu Atwell. That's what I'm saying. Rashina Lee. Yeah, a lot of a lot of interesting names actually go off on these higher value tournaments for one reason or another. And Elijah Mori wraps it up with interesting. It's a really, really interesting build here. So definitely going to be a wide receiver. I'd like it to be AT Perry. If it's not AT Perry, Malik Washington's certainly on the table. Um, Trey Tucker, maybe. Matt Collins, maybe. Uh, we'll see. But I'd really like to be A.T. Perry or Malik Washington if I have to. I wonder if OBJ could be on the table for the Bills on a cheap one year. We'll see. There goes Malik Washington. So it's just A.T. Perry, and we'll go through the teams a little bit here, go through a few other things, and we'll jump into a big board. Penix, there we go, A.T. Perry. Okay. All right, so we're done. 3782 is the build. We'll go through the team in a second here when I go through all three of my teams. And we're going to talk about the roster construction and my strategy with these early big board, higher dollar value tournaments. So three entries, I'm maxed out now. Here's the one we just did. Brock Purdy, Deshaun Watson, Derek Carr, James Cook, Alvin Kamara, Brian Robinson Jr., Bucky Irving, Damian Pierce, A.J. Dillon, Israel Abanacanda, CeeDee Lamb, Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, Deontay Johnson, Troy Franklin, Marvin Mims Jr., Ricky Pearsall, A.T. Perry, Trey McBride, and David Njoku. So that's very, very, very different than my other two drafts and how I was attacking these biggest board tournaments. How I was looking at them is much like I've talked about a few times in my with my strategies. I want to go two top top end quarterbacks, in my opinion, top end quarterbacks 
or at the very least one top end and another mid-level quarterback sort of thing, and two tight ends, two high-quality tight ends that I know I can rely on, right? That's what I wanted to do. And then I can build out my running backs and, and wide receivers and more lean into running backs first. Um, so if you look at my last draft, and let's, can we jump into, how do I find it? I know I can find the draft board. I just don't know what I'm doing right this second here. Here we go. So I was in the seven hole. I got Breeze Hall, which I'm very happy about. Happy to get Brees Hall. That's for sure. Uh, Nick Fredo NF42 was in this one in the one seed. Um, so I went Brees Hall. Josh Allen brought it back. Again, I, I'm focusing on running backs. And I only want two wide receivers. Sorry, two quarterbacks. I only want two quarterbacks. And I really want to hammer running back early. So I went Brees Hall, Josh Allen, DK Metcalf. James Cook to bring back with Josh Allen because obviously I wasn't getting Stefan Diggs, which is certainly fine now after this trade, obviously. James Cook to bring it back. A little bit of a reach on Dalton Kincaid, but I'm fine with that because it just made the most sense. I A, I want to get early round tight ends, elite tight ends, at least in my opinion, and I had to stack it up with Josh Allen. High-powered offense. Now, again, with, with Stefan Diggs gone, I'm loving these even more. So I had to reach on Kincaid, but I'm fine with that. Then Evan Ingram, which I like, again, a little bit early, but now I'm done at tight end. That allows me to be done. In the sixth round, I'm now done at tight end. Yes, I'm weak at wide receiver, of course. DK Metcalf's my only wide receiver as it sits right now. But I, I think I can make up for that later in the draft. There's tons of value, especially with the structure that I went with in this draft. So, so Evan Ingram in the sixth, seventh round, David Montgomery, eighth round, Zamir White, two running backs that I know are going to have a, a, a quality job this year. They're both going to be a little touchdown dependent, but that's fine. Because David Montgomery gets in the end zone. He did, you know, double digit times last year. Zamir White's looking like a beast. One of my favorite picks right now. I brought him up a little bit, I believe. I think he was in the low 100s. So brought him up. I'm fine with that, right? It was between David Montgomery and Najee Harris here, basically. And I wasn't taking Tony Pollard. I wasn't going to take Jalen Warren. Certainly not over uh, Najee Harris. Uh Trey Benson wasn't on my radar here. It was basically David Montgomery because I know what I'm going to get. And then Zamir White, I like that pick. Ninth round, Trevor Lawrence to bring it back with Evan Ingram, right? And now, ninth round, I'm done at quarterback. So I'm done at quarterback. I'm done at tight end by the ninth round of this draft. Again, of course, I'm still super fragile at wide receiver. All I have is DK Metcalf, Metcalf at this point. Right, I know that, but I can get back. I know I can. I can make it up. Um, so, what am I at for running backs? I'm at four running backs here, and uh, four running backs, two tight ends, and I'm done. Two quarterbacks, and I'm done. And one quarter, one wide receiver. So, I need to make up for it. Obviously, bring it back, Gabe Davis. Now I'm. I have double stack, Bills, double stack, Jags. I'm happy with that. Chuba Hubbard. Another running back, I know, but now I'm done at running back. So in the 11th round, I'm done on everything except for wide receiver. And now I can just smash wide receiver after wide receiver after wide receiver for the next nine rounds until this draft is over. And that's what I did. So I went Khalil Shakir, loving that now. Again, full stack with the Buffalo Bills. I got, you know, triple stack with Buffalo Bills. Perfectly happy with that. One of the most potent offenses in the NFL. Marvin Mims, a little too much exposure now. I have them all three of my teams, but it is what it is. Xavier Leggett, quality rookie. Happy to have him. Malachi Corley. Then I just start building out rookies, right? That's, that's where I think there's some value later in these drafts are the rookies. So Xavier Leggett, Malachi Corley, Adam Thielen falls 20 picks past ADP. And this build... It made sense for me to take him. You know, I could have went with Malik Washington, sure, but I have you know two rookies back to back, right? Two back to back rookies, and there's more to come. 
Adam Thielen's still going to have a job. You know, worst case Ontario, he's 100, 100 point, you know, spike week type of a floor wide receiver. He's going to enter my lineup and, and it's going to be okay. He's going to help me out. He's not going to win me weeks or anything, but he's going to help me out. Jalen Hyatt, boomer bust, spike week guy. Javon Baker, another rookie. Greg Dorch, love it. Jacob Cowing, love it. Another rookie. So look at all that yellow, just absolutely pissing yellow for nine straight picks to end this draft. Uh, that's that's how I wanted to attack these, to be honest. This is this is this was perfect for me. This is a perfect draft, more or less. And my other one I like even more, to be honest with you. So we'll go over that in a second. But yeah, I'm done in the 11th round of a 20 round draft. I only have one position to focus on, and that's wide receiver. Yes, I know zero RB bros are probably puking in their mouth right now. I get it. But I just think with these early drafts, early in the season, you got to take what you know. And I know Josh Allen. I know the Jags should improve, I hope. And I know I only want two tight ends. I only, I know I only want two quarterbacks, right? And if I can get away with five running backs, which I did, two, five, 11, two, interesting type of a structure, but I'm happy with it. Just kill it with volume. I've been saying it, you know, week after week on this show. You know, if I can, if I can hammer out these kind of one off positions, quarterback, tight end, and then have a strong running back room. I think I can make up for it at wide receiver. I really do with volume. So we'll see how that one works out. I got one more. One last biggest board. This was the first one I did. And I like this one probably the most, to be honest with you. So zoom in a little bit. Four seed, four hole, whatever you want to call it. This is where we drafted. Got Bijan Robinson fourth overall. I like that. I really want to focus early. Both both those other two were first round running back. I love that. Josh Allen again, perfectly happy with that. High end running back, high end quarterback. Bring it back with another wide receiver, Debo Samuel. Happy with that. It was the same start, just Breeze Hall and uh, and uh, DK Metcalf were in there. James Cook again, I'm happy with that, especially how it looks now. Again, I would have taken. Uh, Stefan Diggs here if he was available to me, but he went before Josh Allen. So it is what it is. I kind of lucked out. Um, Christian Kirk, what do we think we're doing here? Kyle Pitts comes in. High end tight end. I didn't like kind of, I was falling behind in my opinion at tight end because um, I wasn't able to get Trey McBride here. Um, instead, Christian Kirk, I'm perfectly happy with that. Bring in Kyle Pitts. Evan Ingram, where am I going with that, right? Going with the Jags, obviously. Zamir White again. So I certainly wasn't picking him in this draft. Uh, Chuba Hubbard again, wasn't picking him in this draft either. You know, wasn't supposed to take James Cook, but it just worked out. Um, then Trevor Lawrence, obviously, wrap up that Jag stack. So now two, uh, two wide receivers, one, two, three, four, four running backs. I'm done at tight end. I'm done at quarterback. And now I can just hammer... Uh, after round 10, sorry, now I can just hammer wide receivers again. Khalil Shakir, Marvin Mims, Marshawn Lloyd, like that. I'm done at ride, running back now, 13th round, done at running back, done at quarterback, done at tight end, pissed yellow the rest of the draft. Wondell Robinson, Ricky Pearsall, Malik Washington, Jermaine Burton, Greg Dorch, A.T. Perry, and Jacob Cowing again. Obviously, there's some guys in there that I like. I like Jacob Cowing late. I like A.T. Perry late, took him twice now. Greg Dortch, obviously, quality pick right there. Jermaine Burton's a guy. Malik Washington, I'm happy to get. Pearsall, I'm happy to get. These rookies, right? So that's that was my strategy. That was my strategy coming into these was go heavy, early, running back, quarterback, tight end, and then just kill wide receiver with volume. So again, another 2-5, 11-2. Unique structures for both of these two drafts. Very different than the 3782 that I just did, right? In my final bullet. So I'm happy to have a different draft than these two. Obviously, I have the same two quarterbacks in both my other drafts. And, uh, you know, James Cook, Zamir White, Chuba Hubbard, 
are in both. Uh, Marvin Mims is in both. Um, Jacob Cowing is in both, right? Dalton Kincaid is only in the one. Uh, so only a, a double stack with Shakir and James Cook in this one, but but I like it. I like it. I think Khalil Shakir is obviously going to rise from here. Hard to say where he falls throughout the summer and what happens after the draft, but for the rest of big board season before the NFL draft, he's going to rise for sure. Uh, so we'll see where he lands. But that was my strategy with these with these uh, biggest boards, these high dollar value, big or uh, higher stakes kind of drafts. Was uh, yeah, I wanted this kind of a build. Two five eleven two was my dream. I was I'm super happy to have those those structures right there. So yeah, yeah. Go to the chat, big putt daddy. I have some of the same players in my Allen's dig stack. Bijan Chuba, Zamir, and A.T. Perry. Yeah, quality picks. Quality picks. I think A.T. Perry could be, you know, a real nice late round sleeper type pick. As long as they don't do anything at wide receiver in the draft, at least not, you know, inside the first three rounds. If it's fourth, fifth, sixth round wide receiver, even maybe not fourth, even fifth, sixth, seventh round wide receivers for the Saints, then A.T. Perry is going to be looking really good. Um, I, I've been slowly creeping up my exposure to to him for sure. So I like that pick. Zamir, he's been just skyrocketing since the big board open. Same, you know, for me, Chuba's a fantastic value where he's at at 120 ADP. Look right here. I took him at a hundredth pick, a 100th overall, and that's 20 picks ahead of ADP. I'm all right with that actually with Chuba. Um, we'll see how that works out. But I I, I really like the value of Chuba Hubbard. I got him here at 127 behind, you know, half a round after ADP. So I'm happy with that. Um, so yeah, good picks. Good picks. I like that. Um, now what are, what are we going to do? What I wanted to do, we'll just jump into a big board and kind of talk through it a little bit. I wanted to talk about, um, I'm at 130 with, uh, I got four slows going in the big board. So I'm at 130. So I have 20 more bullets in the big board to max out. I'll be maxing out everything in the early season, which is sweet, I guess. <laughs> that'll be that'll be good. That, that was part of my plan, to be honest with you. Like I said, uh, uh, in a you know few weeks ago, sort of thing. If I feel like I have a an edge, which I I think I do, it's in the early you know best ball drafts in these big boards. So if you're in the chat and you want to jump into a big board, let's go. We're gonna jump into one. Waiting for nine, so tons of room. Um, so yeah, what I wanted to talk about with the draft stuff was, um, this kind of quarterback situation plus the, the Minnesota Vikings thing. People are just essentially saying that the Vikings are going to trade up for a quarterback. I actually think the Vikings are going to get locked out. I, I just think that they're not going to be able to move up because the cards, the Arizona Cardinals are not going to want to move back to where the Vikings are. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's going to be one, two, three, in my opinion. They, they it'd be f extremely ill-advised, <laughs> and GMs can lose their job if the the Commanders or the Patriots trade out from their top three picks. I just do not see those happening. Period. I think they have to stick and pick a, a quarterback. Otherwise, their fans might completely have a, a meltdown. So I think that those top three picks are quarterbacks for sure. Then the cards are sitting there. They can absolutely trade down, and I think they do, but I just don't think that they're going to move down to, what is it, 11, where the Vikings are, I believe? 11th overall. Why do I think that? Because that essentially says that we're not getting one of the top three wide receivers, period. Even though that fourth overall pick, I think, is going to be a quarterback too. Uh, who do I think trades up to four? I think it's the Giants. I think the Giants at six are in a perfect spot to move up. The cards are in a perfect spot to move back. Even if the, the, the chargers who pick fifth overall, even if they pick uh, Marvin Harrison jr, your consolation prize is Malik neighbors. I think you'll, they'll be fine with that. Right. Also, I don't think in my opinion, I don't think that the chargers are going to draft Marvin Harrison jr. Why Jim Harbaugh, hates Ohio State. 
with a, a massive amount of passion. It's no secret whatsoever. You telling me that he's going to draft somebody who started on third base, right? That whole saying that he had about Ryan Day starting on third base and thinks he hit a triple. Didn't work out at the combine. Didn't work out at a pro day. You think Jim Harbaugh is going to draft that player with his first draft pick back in the NFL? I don't. I think the cards can say, can basically dare the Chargers to draft Marvin Harrison Jr. and go to six. And I think they can get him there as long as if the Giants are trading up to four, they're drafting a quarterback. And I think that they would be for sure. That's the only reason you do. And it's either Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, maybe Jaden Daniels, but I think Jaden Daniels is gone by then for sure. Um, so it's either Drake May or J.J. McCarthy, in my opinion, that goes fourth overall. And I think it's going to be the Giants that move up. That That's kind of where I'm sitting at right now. And I don't think the Chargers pick Marvin Harrison. They could pick Nick, Malik Neighbors. Don't get me wrong. Um, I think Joe Alt might be that guy. But um, I think that the Chargers is going to say, what I'm saying is I'll believe it when I see it, Jim Harbaugh. I'll believe you pick Marvin Harrison Jr. when I see it. So that's my that's my recent thoughts with the top five slash six picks in the NFL draft coming up in a couple of weeks. That's kind of what I'm leaning right now. We'll see. The NFL draft is a wild time, especially right now. Again, it's super, super lying season, but... That's kind of the way I'm looking at it. And again, even, even if the chart, let's say the, the, the Cardinals do trade back to six, even if the Chargers do take Marvin Harrison, again, your consolation prize is Malik Neighbors or a guy that I like more than Neighbors personally is Roma Dunze, but I think that they would take Neighbors in that situation. So pretty good consolation prize is what I'm getting at, right? And I just, I just don't think that they would move back to 11 unless it was like a godfather type of a you know, situation where it's 11th overall and 23 overall, whatever. I think that's what they traded for. So 11th overall, 23 overall, and the next two years of first or something stupid like that. Then it's like, okay, sure. Yeah, that's a, that's a King's ransom. We'll, we'll take that. But I don't think the Vikings would go that far. Um, yeah, I, I just think that uh, they'd be happy to pick up some extra value from the Giants move back a couple spots and still be able to get Marvin Harrison Jr. At least that's kind of the way I see it. Um, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Anyone in here don't recognize, I mean, draft dude, I've drafted with him. I think I've drafted with I Can Win. Uh, what are we at? 10th overall. Definitely want to get some A.J. Brown exposure, so I hope he's there. And he is. Nice. I'll take that. Let's get some A.J. Brown action in our lives. If I didn't like Nico Collins' price before, I have 0% ownership, 0% in 150 drafts, 0% Nico Collins. And if I didn't like him before, I sure shouldn't have drafted him now. So he's off my board completely right this second. Um, don't particularly want to go Barkley, even though I have a draft where I have a full Eagles stack with Barkley. Brown, Devontae, and Jalen Hurts. And that would be kind of cool to build out, you know, maybe have a couple swings at that. But I'll be going, uh, yeah, maybe I'll go Drake, Drake London here on this one. I, I do need a little more Jonathan. I do need a little more Jonathan Taylor exposure. I just think that he should be a little lower than this is my concern. Uh, let's go Jonathan Taylor. I need a little more. I need a little more exposure. I need a little more exposure. So let's go Jonathan Taylor there. But yeah, that's my draft thoughts right now as it sits. Um, realistically, I think that's what my, my mock draft will look like unless some things change between now and then. Um, so there's a little, you know, <laughs> a little premature, uh, you know, Diggs goes 16th. A little premature uh, re revealing of my uh, mock draft thoughts as it sits, but um, that's what I think. And then the other thing with with Joe Alt, and this could just be a smoke screen, and maybe they just think he's that guy. Anyways, the Titans didn't send anybody 
to his pro day. Not a single person, not a scout, not an O-line coach, nothing. And you're telling me that, that uh, oh man, what's his dad's name? Brian Callahan's dad. Um, oh man, Bill, Bill Callahan, uh, the offensive line coach for the Titans. You're telling me that he wouldn't want to get a look at his tight end, like his, his O-line. He wouldn't want to work out his O-line. I, I'm, I don't think, I don't think they expect him to be there. And if he is, maybe they just say, Hey, he's, he's that guy. He's generational. We can, we can, uh, we're okay. Thinking that Joe Alt can be that guy. And I think that he could, and I think that they should draft him if he's there 100%. Um, I think the chargers take him, but, um, if he is there, the Titans should absolutely jump all over that. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. It just was really interesting to me that they sent nobody. The Titans sent nobody to the Notre Dame Pro Day. That was a shock to me because he should be within their, you know, range. They should think that they that he could fall there because he absolutely could, right? So that was a shock to me. We'll see. Maybe they bring him in for a private workout. I'm not sure. I'm going to keep tabs on that. Uh, certainly before, you know, I, I do put out my mock draft draft episode, which will be a live stream, um, a couple weeks, but, uh, as it sits right now, I'm thinking Joe Alt, not necessarily that, he, that he's off their board or anything like that, but that it's just interesting. It's just really, really interesting that they didn't send a soul to his pro day especially with how offensive line coaches like to work guys out themselves. That's, that's like a known fact across the NFL is offensive line coaches like to really like to get in there with these guys and see what they're all about, what makes them tick, that sort of thing. Um, and the fact that he wasn't there was a, a shock to me. So we will see. Um, I could go, I could go with the classic uh, Jalen Hurts, Devonte Smith here. But I think that that's going to just be way overdone a little bit. So I'm not going to go that route. I'm going to go with Derek Henry here. Bring up a running back a little bit. I'm fine with that. Tons of wide receiver depth right here in this range of the draft. Um, I could even go. I could even go Jalen Hurts. Oh, there he goes. That's fine. So he's obviously going to bring in Devontae Smith. That's fine. Makes sense. With Barkley. Interesting. Yeah, that's fine. Like I said, I got a full Philly stack myself. Barkley, Hurts, AJ Brown, and Devontae Smith. And I kind of like having at least one or two of those in my you know exposure. But uh, tons of wide receivers here to pick from. I'd really, really like uh, DK Metcalf right here. Uh, but if he's not there, probably Mike Evans, as we know, found out a couple weeks ago. I, I, I have like 0% exposure to Mike Evans. So if he's there, I'll actually take him over DK for sure. So I'm getting one of these two. That's fair. That's fair. I would have liked to get Mike Evans there, but... That's how she goes. So we'll go DK. And I like the way this is shaping up so far. So yeah, interesting stuff at the draft going on these days. Like I said, it's 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 lying season right now. So we'll see where things kind of end up. Keep your eyes on visits and things like that. Who's visiting who? The wide receivers are making their rounds right now. But we'll see. Anybody getting out of line in this? Looks like it's pretty straightforward. Marvin Harrison still like at this ADP is off my board personally. I have, I think, one share of Marvin Harrison. And I think I got um, you know, 28th or so, right around, right around here. Uh 27, 28, third round. I'm okay with taking a swing on Marvin Harrison in the third round, but you wouldn't catch me dead picking Marvin Harrison in the second round. It's not happening. It is not happening. So yeah, just to get some exposure, I would take him in the third, but I'm not, I'm not doing it. Uh, 
not doing it in the second round. I'm not going to hold that bag, not knowing where he could or will go. Just not going to. And, and to be honest, even if the most likely is the Cardinals, and yeah, he could be, you know, serviceable there. He could be thousand yard, eight touchdown kind of guy. Like I, I would take Marvin Harrison over Nico and I would have taken Marvin Harrison over Nico before the Stefan Diggs trade now, definitely. And, uh, maybe this, uh, maybe draft dude isn't up on the, the news or something. Cause Nico should fall to at least the fourth round. In my opinion, at least people seem to forget that tank Dell was blowing him out of the water production wise before he got hurt. Nico had like two spike weeks, I think. They were pretty big weeks. Don't get me wrong. It was like 120, 140 yards and a touchdown or two. They're big, big spike weeks. But Tank Dell was blowing him out of the water production-wise before he got hurt. After he got hurt, obviously Nico blows up, but he is not a second-round pick. Never was for me. Never was. Certainly not a back-end, you know, one-two turn kind of guy, which is where he was going a lot of times. Um. But that's just my two cents on it. That's just my two cents, which is worth two cents. <laughs> so um, where are we going here? 58, couple picks. This is probably going to be all, all off the bat already. I can probably tell that this will be a three, six, eight, three build, probably. We'll see where it ends up. Um, I could go with Anthony Richardson here, but it will definitely be Christian Kirk if he's there. Uh, maybe I'd take a Hollywood Brown share here. I don't really have much. I don't mind that. Let's go Hollywood Brown. Don't have enough exposure. He just, yeah, he just wasn't particularly high on my list when he's a free agent. And then uh, he just, where he shot up after he signed with uh, Kansas City, I just kind of missed the boat, if I'm being honest with you. Not that I don't like him or, you know, had anything against him or whatever. But I kind of honestly just missed the boat on uh, on Hollywood Brown. I would have taken Joe Mixon there, but there he goes. Not a problem. Kyle Pitts is on the radar. Christian Kirk's obviously still on the radar. Jaden Reed, lots of value around here. A lot of good picks around here, this uh, this five, six, six turn area. You really can't go wrong. Richardson goes. Jonathan Taylor, Derek Henry should be fine for a little while at running back. So I'm definitely going to focus on wide receiver. Kyle Pitts, like I said, is on the board. Don't mind Jaden Reed. Calvin Ridley goes. Probably take a risk on Kyle Pitts here first. Over Kirk. Yeah, okay. And then he goes. That's fine. Yeah. Made my decision easy. Sometimes I like that. Sometimes it's good. Just take take the guy to take the decision off my plate. And then I'll take, take the guy who's left. You know, I kind of like that sometimes. Um... Yeah. Brian Thomas seems to be moving up. The draft is interesting too. Uh, let's go back to the draft. I, I, again, I was doing a, a quick mock uh, just to get my feet wet and, and get the juices flowing and, and start my process. There's once it gets to like 20 or 22, maybe there's really not much left as far as like high end talent. It's kind of your, your, I, <sighs> I kind of got to a spot where it's like, man, anybody could go here. Anybody could go in this, this, these last kind of 10 picks, the last 10 picks of the first round, I think might be a bit of a whirlwind. And that's where I think that these quarter, these other quarterbacks will go the two others, Bo Nix, Michael Penix. I don't think that Michael Penix is a, as a first round quarterback personally, but I think he will go in the late first round. Now that I've gone kind of gone through it, like I think a team like I don't know Raiders maybe could trade back or someone trades back into the first round late, you know, 
Um, I think that could happen. Vikings could make a move back into, or the 23 pick. That's a perfect spot. I think they probably do go with a guy like Penix, maybe Bo Nix, maybe I think Bo Nix fits that scheme personally. Um, you know, very close to Sam Darnold as far as, you know, the way that they play the game. So now I'm starting to come around to the idea that I think Bo Nix, I, I thought Bo Nix was a first round pick personally the whole time. And I think, I think that Michael Penix makes his way in there. Um, that was the other thing I wanted to touch on with this Stefan Diggs trade. And that's another reason why these quarterbacks are going to go. That's another reason why quarterbacks are going to go one, two, three, four. You get the right quarterback. You hit on a quarterback. Look at the Texans. You can change around the entire franchise overnight, quite literally, right? The Texans were a dumpster fire two years ago. They were an absolute dumpster fire. There were so many issues. Obviously, too, with the quarterback, they got the right coach in there as well. So, you know, I, I would like to think that the Vikings have the right coach in there right now. Um, I think the Raiders probably have the right coach in there now as well. Um, but that's what makes these teams tick. And that's what makes these franchises tick. And you can, it's not a three, four, five year rebuild. I saw someone tweet it today as well, um, where it's not a four year, five year rebuild. It's overnight, potentially, if you get the right quarterback and the right coach combo, right? It's easy to find talent as far as like skill positions, especially running backs, right? Um, tight ends you can hit late. Like even look at a guy like Kate Otten. He comes in, he's quality. He's he's a, he's a chain mover. You know, he's very Dalton Schultz-esque, right? Um, tight ends, again, re relatively easy. Running backs, relatively easy. You can easily trade for a wide receiver. Look at these price tags on some of these wide receivers moving around. Obviously what they just spent for Stefan Diggs, right? You can easily acquire older, you know, wide receivers that are still super talented. Look at what they just, uh, the bears just did for Keenan Allen, right? That's going to change. If, if Caleb Williams is the guy that's that entire franchise is different, right? So that's another reason why I think Michael Penix, Bo Nix are going to be first rounders. Cause as I always say, I always say on this show, on any show I've ever been on, I always say, there's 32 NFL teams. There's not even close to 32 NFL quarterbacks. Not even close. There's like there's like maybe 14. Count on them every week. Go win me a ball game. Make a play when you need it most. Why quarterbacks in the NFL or in the world? We'll say right in the world. There's maybe 14, 15 tops. Right. That's why they're always looking for for quarterbacks. They're always on the menu. And it can just flip the switch on your roster and or your whole franchise, right? Um, let's get back to this draft. I went on a bit of a tangent there, but hopefully a good conversation. Um, where do I want to go in this draft now? Now I'm lost. Um, I could go. I could go, and I think I will make sense here since he dropped. I uh, didn't really drop, but he he dropped from the 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 CD Lamb drafter. Go ahead and grab Dak Prescott, and then I can bring it back with uh, Jake Ferguson. I like that, and that's what I'm gonna do as long as Jake Ferguson is still there, which he should be. Um, so we'll see what happens there, but. Yeah, that's that's kind of my my thoughts about this uh, this upcoming draft a little bit and the quarterback situation and this trade that was made by the Texans. Fantastic trade, just makes so much sense. They essentially are essentially they're saying, in my opinion, this is how I'm looking at it. They gave up a second round pick next year, right? So they still have uh, this year's second. And all their other picks, whatever. They don't have a first round pick as far as I can recall off the top of my head. No, they don't have a first round pick. So um, essentially what they, they traded a second next year, they got back Stefan Diggs, a fifth and a sixth. So if you, if you think about it, the way I'm looking at it and thinking about it, 
is they're essentially trading or sorry, they're essentially getting step on digs for what you would think would be is a third round wide receiver is kind of how I'm looking at it. So essentially they're saying, you know, we're getting step on digs type of caliber and hopefully production for a third round wide receiver. That's the way I look at this trade. Um, so we'll see if he works out and there's a lot of mouths to feed now, but that offense is looking good. And then in this year's draft, they're going to go, they're going to go with the running back relatively high, you know, third, fourth round. I think they'll go with the running back, um, maybe fifth round, third, third to fifth round, they'll go with a running back. And then every other pick in their draft is going to be offensive line or defense. No question about it. That's the way I'm going after this draft. If I'm the Texans, focus on defense probably first and early, but then I'm going to bring in some some offensive line help to make sure that my you know everything I just invested in you know kind of stays afloat. They brought back Charlie Heck, which is an okay depth piece, but um, you got to keep investing in that offensive line and just keep some fresh bodies in there and make sure that you're you're adding as much competition to the roster and to training camp as you possibly can. Uh, that's how I'm doing it. And my difference makers in the draft, second, third round guys are going to be on the defensive side of the ball for sure. Um, but man, I, I, as I said earlier in the, in the show here, I really wish I, I uh, threw a little sprinkle on the, the Texans when I was thinking about it to, to win the Super Bowl back when they were like, I don't know, 20 to one or something like that. That would have been a nice, uh, a nice little sprinkle, but say la vie. So we're done at tight end in this draft. Kyle Pitts and Ferguson, I'm fine with that. If you watch this show, you know I like to go two tight ends. That's my most favorite build structure is two tight ends. Maybe I'll bring in a third if I want to go with uh, Noah Fant here to bring in with DK Metcalf as long as I draft Geno Smith as well, which I might do because it makes sense with what I'm doing here. Um could go my guy Zamir White. This is a quality running back area. Even Eckler's on the table. Zamir White, Trey Benson, Zach Moss, Brian Robinson are all viable. I think Tajay Spears is still draftable in this range. Uh, Chase Brown's there. I have 0% Devin Singletary. And if you watch this show last year, I probably had more exposure to Devin Singletary than anybody on the planet. I had like 30% in uh, Best Ball Mania and like, I don't know, four or 500 drafts. I had like 30% Devin Singletary. That one was right for me. Um, but now I'm not on the Devin Singletary juice, if you will, this year. Um, do have too much exposure to... Uh, um, uh, geez, I want to say Noah Gray, but that's not his first name. Gray. Um, geez, why do I want to say Noah Gray? Eric Gray. There you go. And he was a four letter name. I have too much exposure to Eric Gray, but we'll see how that shakes out. All those wide or running backs go. That's a little annoying. Could take Brian Robinson again. And I probably will probably will not. Probably going to go Jacoby Myers here. Haven't taken him in a little while. Could go with Tyler Lockett uh, to bring in with my DK Metcalf. But I don't think I need to do that. I could still go with a couple running backs in this range that I like. And I could go with Troy Franklin. Again, I'm coming around to the thought process that Troy Frank Franklin might just end up a Buffalo Bill. And I haven't drafted him in a long time. I, I just think he's very boomer bust. And I think I might go that route given uh, my, my talent, at least what I perceive as talent and, and production at running back here. So... Let's uh, bring up Troy Franklin here. Bring in my first rookie on the squad. I don't mind that. Uh, it's either Brian Robinson or Troy Franklin. So let's do it.
Let's do it. So, yeah, the draft is going to be interesting. I'm excited. Um, big trade. We talked about that. Where does that leave the Bills? Let's talk about the Bills side because we haven't really touched on that a crazy amount yet. Um, I like Khalil Shakir. I know people don't like him. Some do, some don't. He's very polarizing. You know, if you look at what he did, he had 45 targets and he had 39 catches. Obviously, that sort of efficiency cannot continue. It will not transfer to 100 catches and, or sorry, uh, 100 targets and 88 catches or something. That will not transfer that way. I get that. Um, but he's been on this team. He's been on this roster. He's been catching passes from Josh Allen for the last two years. He had some extreme efficiency. Like I said a couple of weeks ago, if they're watching film this offseason, especially if Josh Allen is watching film, which I'm sure he is this offseason, right? He's going to notice that, God damn, Khalil Shakir caught every fucking ball I threw to him. Literally. Six strong. Yeah, six times. I get it. But... Every time I threw the ball to him, he was coming down with it, right? So he's going to notice that. It's going to translate somewhat. He knows this offense. Again, he's been there. He's done that. I like Khalil Shakir. I think that there's still some, some value there. Especially, did he get drafted yes, yet in this draft? No. If he didn't, then I'm, I'll certainly take him. He's not seeming to move up too much as far as ADP is concerned because he's, what, 130, 135. I, you have to move him up. <laughs> you have to, whether you, you, you know, really believe in him or not, that really doesn't matter. You have to move him up your board, period. So, you know, he was 120s and he slipped and now he's, you know, 136. So he slipped a full round in the last, call it two, you know, month, we'll call it last month. Now he's going to shoot up. Like you're, you're telling me you wouldn't take Khalil Shakir on the Buffalo Bills. You know, he's on the Buffalo Bills 100%. You wouldn't take him over Lad McConkey, who word we don't know where he's going to go. Let's say he ends up in Carolina, Lad McConkey. You taking Khalil Shakir or Lad McConkey? Who are you taking? For me, it's every, every goddamn day of the week, seven days a week, twice on Sundays, I'm taking Khalil Shakir, right? So I think you have to move him up your board. I think there's tons of value. If he's here in this draft, I will certainly be taking him. Um, uh, everybody seems to be on the Curtis Samuel juice, which is fine, but I don't think people are remembering or realizing his injury history. He's He misses a fair amount of games. You know, Curtis Samuel misses a fair amount of games, and that's a concern for me. I like Dalton Kincaid for sure. He's super high on my uh, exposure list as well, especially for tight ends. Um, and I'm not saying that Khalil Shakir should be going ahead of Curtis Samuel. I'm not saying that. Um, I think they should be going around the same range. I think that that Shakir should move up to where Samuel is right now, and they should be going kind of 1A, 1B sort of thing. And there goes Shakir. I would have liked to get him. Um, uh, coming back to this, I'm definitely going to be taking, uh, Kirk cousins here to pair up with Kyle Pitts. I would really like that. And there he goes. Um, could go with Zach Charbonnet, but I can't take him over Chuba Hubbard and he goes anyways. That's nice. So yeah, I've been talking about how much I like Chuba Hubbard and my exposure's getting a little aggressive, but I just think there's too much value here. Chuba Hubbard or Blake Corum? Give me Chuba Hubbard. Give me Chuba Hubbard. Even over Jalen Wright, who I like a ton. Give me Chuba Hubbard. Um, so that's my thoughts on Khalil Shakir. I, th I think a big, big part of it is going to be, you know, the offensive players and coaching staff. So Joe Brady, Kyle or Josh Allen, and hopefully Khalil Shakir himself are going to notice that every time they threw him the ball, he came down with it. That matters. And pretty big play potential. He had 600 yards on 39 catches, right? Pretty big play potential there. Should be playing the outside. You know, as it sits right now in the clubhouse, if you will, Khalil Shakir has the Stefan Diggs role essentially right now because because 
Curtis Samuel is a slot, the slot wide receiver. So if you're talking about roles and you're talking about who's going to do what, Khalil Shakir is going to move to the outside. Curtis Samuel is going to be the slot receiver. And again, I want to reiterate, I'm not saying that I would take uh, or you should take Khalil Shakir over Curtis Samuel. I'm saying at 136 ADP, there's a ton of value there. In my opinion. Is it Jerome Ford here? Do I take Jerry Judy and try to get another Deshaun Watson share that I don't want? <laughs> I guess. Uh, we'll cross our bridge when we get there. Um, but yeah, and then we'll see who they draft. And, you know, hopefully for this draft, you know, Troy Frank Franklin's on the board for them. And, and I think he's in play. I think Adnai Mitchell, Troy Franklin, if they want to trade up, uh, Brian Rob Brian Thomas, sorry, is certainly on the table. Um, I guess you could say Lad McConkey, but I don't think Lad fits that offense and that team and what they. I just don't. I'd, I'd be I'd be pretty surprised. I'd be pretty surprised if the Bills took Lad McConkey at twenty eighth overall. I would not be surprised one bit, but I don't think Adonai Mitchell is there. I think they would have to trade up for Adonai Mitchell. I think they'd have to trade up for Brian Thomas. Um, I think Troy F Franklin would be there. I think Lad McConkey would be there. Um, I think, I don't know. Yeah, Roman Wilson, Pearsall for sure. There's some other rookies I might be forgetting. Coleman, I'm not, I, I don't, I, I'm not a fan of Coleman whatsoever. If, if the Bills take Coleman, okay, I'll draft him in the summer. Um, but I'm not doing it before this NFL draft. So we'll see how that works out. Um, who else? Devontae Walker. Sure. Xavier Leggett, I think would be a great fit for the bills. Um, yeah, th those guys are all on the table. I would say Xavier Leggett, Troy Frank Franklin. Those are the only guys that'll be there in my opinion at 28. The other two that make sense, they would have to trade up, in my opinion, and that's Adnai Mitchell and Brian Thomas Jr. are the other two that make sense for the Bills, but they would have to trade up. And all these people, there's a couple things going on, on Twitter right now. Twitter's madness. It always is. I get it. But a couple, like talking about the T. Higgins thing, I've been over T. Higgins on this channel ad nauseum, and I'm not going to go into it again. T. Higgins is not going to be a Buffalo Bill unless they want to way overpay. If they want to send a first round pick to the Cincinnati Bengals, snap accept. No problem. But that's not going to happen. T. Higgins is going to be on the Bengals almost 100% of the time. 99.9% .9 he's going to be on the Bengals. Okay? So we'll leave it there. Uh, Ayuk. Ayuk is going to be on the 49ers. Same thing. He's going to be on the 49ers. So it's going to come from the draft. And then the people that are saying that they're going to trade up for fucking Marvin Harrison and Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze and all that, that is just absolute madness too. Unless they're going to trade more than two first round picks to move up from 28 to what, five? Give me a break. How often does a trade like that happen? A, number one at all. B, what, what is the compensation that they can even give that would make sense for that team? It just, it doesn't. It doesn't. If you're saying that the that the Chargers are are you know wanting more picks or whatever, they want to rebuild. Like to me, that's just madness because you have a quarterback, you have your guy, you have your shot, you know. You have to build around this guy. You have to, you know, you you have to build it out while he's young and his windows open and all this kind of stuff. Like with a quarterback, especially like Justin Herbert in this scenario, you're only a few pieces away from being a, a Super Bowl contender, literally. So there's no fucking way. It just doesn't make sense to trade down to 28th overall. Yeah, you get two late, late 20s first round picks, but you're not getting that difference maker in the draft. You're not getting that blue chip player in the draft. Like if you're saying that a 28th overall pick is a blue blue chip players are like, there's like eight, <laughs> maybe per draft total. 
let alone, you know, just in the first round, it gives you more of an opportunity to hit the higher you pick. Right. Um, but man, it just doesn't make sense for someone like the chargers to move down to 28 and the bills just don't have the firepower to get up there. So anyone that's seen that to me is just clickbaity bullshit. And it's just madness. It's not real. Like, give me a fucking break, man. Talk sense. Got a little fired up on that one, but <laughs> it drives me fucking crazy. It's nuts when people say stuff like that. It's just like, you got to be somewhat realistic here, people. Like, you, you really got to be, this isn't Madden. You know? <laughs> I hate the people that play Madden on Twitter. You know, it's it's just madness. Think Think fucking logically, please, for two seconds and just work it through your head. And there's no way that it'll happen. So anyways, anyways. The Bills might be able to get up to early 20s, late teens. So realistically, they could certainly have a shot at Adonai Mitchell, Brian Thomas Jr. They could have a shot at those one of those two wide receivers. And to me, that's, that's what I would like to do. If I were the Bills and if I were a Bills fan, that's what I would want to do. I'd want Brian Thomas Jr. real bad if, if if I could make that happen. If he slips to like, I don't know, if he slips to even like the Raiders, let's say, at what are they, 12th? And I'm the Bills and I could make that trade happen and I can draft Brian Thomas. I would send two first round picks for sure. I'd send my 28 and I would send next year's first to get Brian Thomas Jr. For sure, I would do that. And that's possible because then the Raiders could potentially get Michael Penix at 28 or have a little more firepower to move up to call it 24 or five, something like that. I don't know. Um, but that would make more sense. Like that's logical thinking if you ask me. Um, so we'll see. And then, so I think it's a, a rookie B Khalil Shakir. They probably are going to start if they didn't. I, I should look, I should look at their tendencies towards the end of last year with Joe Brady came in. Were they running a lot more 12 personnel with Knox and uh and uh Kincaid, or was Kincaid playing as a third wide receiver and 11 personnel, which is entirely possible too? You, he's just a big slot receiver, you know. You have you could theoretically have Khalil Shakir on the outside. Kincaid on the outside, uh, Curtis Samuel in the slot, Dawson Knox in 11 personnel. You could do that, but I could, I, you know, I could certainly see them running more 12 personnel um, and running the ball a lot more. Towards the end of the season, they did run the ball. When Joe Brady took over, they started running the ball more. That's another reason why I love uh, James Cook so much this year. He's my second highest exposed player in uh in the big board season so far and i don't see that changing i have him on every single one of my biggest boards as we just talked about earlier in the episode um i'm a big fan of, of uh, james cook this year big believer fingers crossed he uh stays healthy and everything like that um i'm getting blocked out at uh i haven't really talked about this draft for a little while <laughs> that we're in the middle of doing um i'm kind of getting boxed out at quarterback but I'll definitely take Geno Smith if he's there to pair up with my DK Metcalf. And then that opens the door for Noah Fant if I want to go a three court, three tight end build here. Um, I was going to take Deshaun Watson again, but pair him up with Judy. But he got taken. That's fine. Um, does this guy have any? Oh, no. He's got... Uh, oh, he takes Will Levis. Awesome. He had Charbonnet, so that had me concerned. I'll take Geno here. And I definitely need to get a third quarterback. What is it? What are we at? Two, five, six, two. Um, I'm probably just going to take a rookie, JJ McCarthy. And that's it. <laughs> that's all that's left. Um, and I might just take him now, to be honest with you. Just wrap it up. Take JJ McCarthy who, in my opinion, is either going to be a New England Patriot or a New York Giant. That's my 
prediction for J.J. McCarthy. Unless I want to take stupid Derek Carr, because then I can always bring it back to A.T. Perry. But that's so... I, I can take a swing with Dak. With having Dak on this roster, I can take a swing with J.J. McCarthy. Let's do that. And then I don't need to go... Or I could still bring in Noah Fant, I suppose. And then stick to what I was saying earlier with my three, six, eight, three. And I might go that route. If fans there, I'll take them, but we'll cross the bridge when we get there. So yeah, there's my very impassioned, a lot of, a lot of rants tonight, a lot of, a lot of screaming and ranting, cussing and things like that. But sometimes you get heated, you know, um, that's what I think is going to happen with the bills. That that's my kind of predictions. And that's, that's what I think happens. I think they definitely bring in minimum two wide receivers in this draft. Matt Collins is a good pickup for them. Um, Justin Shorter maybe makes a team. I hope Andy Isabella gets a shot to do something. That would be nice to see. Former second round pick kind of just rotted in Arizona for years. Former UMass wide receiver. I hope, I hope Andy Isabella gets a shot to do something. Um, it's kind of hard to say that he would though, considering he's been in the league for as long as he has been. And, uh, he has never been given an opportunity that speaks volumes that he's never even been given an, an opportunity, especially in a team like Arizona, where there was moving pieces constantly wide receivers were never particularly settled, um, shit like that. And he never, he never really got an opportunity whatsoever. So it's pretty hard to just think that that he comes in and gets an opportunity there. Tyler Boyd, who just got drafted, that that could be a good fit. Um, but a lot of the things that you would want Curtis Samuel to do, Tyler Boyd is really good at and might be better at in a lot of things. Um, but you brought in Curtis Samuel, you paid him. He's going to run the ball a little bit too, Curtis Samuel. He's the original Debo, same last name. Um, but Curtis Samuel has been, you know, 30, 40 carry guy for his whole career, realistically. So he's going to get some carries. You can use him in different ways. Um, so you could still bring in a guy like Tyler Boyd, especially where it sits now. Like he shouldn't command a crazy amount of capital or financial, um, you know, cap space. And they're obviously up against the cap, the bills. So they don't have a crazy amount of room, but he shouldn't command that much because he's still a free agent. Unless somebody gets desperate, and that might be what his uh, his agent is looking to do is is you know kind of leverage desperation if there's a big injury somewhere that sort of a thing. Like once once the the main wave of free agency happens, and this is for all positions, it's not just wide receivers. It's for all positions. Once the main wave kind of happens, if you're still a free agent. You might as well just sit back and wait. You know, you don't have to go through mini camp. You don't have to go through OTAs. Just stay in shape, do your own thing, and wait for an injury. And then you're going to get the money you're after, or a little bit more, a little bit. You know, the money you're getting offered as a free agent isn't quite there. The money that you want is way too high. Maybe you meet somewhere in the middle if there's an injury. Linebackers, you know, are like defensive players like that, safeties, corners, even are always kind of doing that sort of a thing where they just say, okay, fuck it. I didn't get signed. I'm going to wait. I'm just going to stay in shape all off season and then sign that contract when someone gets hurt. Cause it's going to happen. We all know that it's football. It's going to happen. Guys get hurt. So I guess I'll take no fant on this one just cause it makes sense. It really does. And then as long as he doesn't get picked right here, which he certainly could. Dang it. <laughs> um, I have a plan for my six wide receiver, or sorry, running back position. I am still going to go with three tight ends. But only if... He's there with my next pick here. I like Jermaine, Jermaine Burton. A little bit underrated, I think. Another big play guy. 
coveted recruit, Alabama guy, Georgia guy as well. Just just never really played with a in 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 either a a system or b with a quarterback that could really you know push the ball downfield or take advantage of his skills and strengths. So uh, I like Jermaine Burton. We're either going like this. I would like Jatavian Sanders to be there, and if he is, I will take him. Um, I have a plan for my last wide receiver spot. I have a plan for my last running back spot, which I will let you in on as soon as I pick JT Sanders. Lovely. There we go. So my last wide receiver is going to be um, a stack play who we'll see what they do in the draft. But I don't think that the Cowboys, um, certainly I don't think with their first round pick, unless someone falls again, like Adonai Mitchell, Brian Thomas Jr., unless they fall to where the Cowboys at 22, 24, something like that. Um, unless they fall, I don't think they'll be picking a wide receiver high in the draft. So I'm going to take Jalen Tolbert as long as he's there because he, he should have an opportunity, you know, had an okay sophomore campaign there. Had an okay season last year. He's got to take that step forward. It's basically now or never for him, you know. And and all I really need in this uh, 17th round, or sorry, 19th, 20th round pick is like if he gets 40 catches, 40 to 50 catches, six to 700 yards, 600 yards, four touchdowns. Lovely. That's all I really need. So Jalen Tolbert's gonna be my guy there, and I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is on this running back pick. I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I've been, I've been picking up some shares. I'm probably at like 5%. I probably have them in like nine drafts right now. This is, uh, hopefully it goes well in the NFL draft. And I think it will. He showed out at his pro day. He went to RB running back university, Memphis, putting my money where my mouth is. Blake Watson. Love me some Blake Watson. Might just be the best pass catching back in this entire draft. So anyone that likes Bucky Irving, anyone that likes Will Shipley, Blake Watson should be on your radar. Um, ran a 4-3 at his pro day. Former wide receiver. He's going to be with the new return rules. With these new return rules, number one, prediction for you here. Number one, I think that there will be a record amount of returns for a touchdown. Kick returns for a touchdown. I think there'll be a record this year for kick returns for a touchdown with these new kickoff rules. Number two, teams are going to covet that position more, uh, not only in the draft, but just on their roster. Their kick returner is going to be more important than ever. Number three, Blake Watson might be the best kick returner in this entire draft. At least he's up there. He's he's one of the top, I would say, three in this entire draft as a kick returner. So he's going to win a kick returner job, in my opinion, as long as he's healthy. He's going to win a kick returner job. He'll be the second or third running back on the depth chart. He's going to make a team. That's the way I'm seeing it. And now with what he did at his pro day, he's going to get drafted. Put my money where my mouth is. I like Blake Watson. I've been talking about him a fair amount. I have been picking him, not a lot on stream. So here you go. Put my money where my mouth is. I'm going to be taking Blake Watson here. And we're almost wrapped up. It was a passionate episode tonight. A lot of screaming and yelling and cussing. And it's a good time. Good show. Glad everybody came. Hey, hit that like button while you're here. Hopefully, hopefully you have already. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. Turn on the notification bell. We went we went live about a half hour early tonight because this this biggest board filled quicker than I thought. So we had to just kind of pivot and make it happen and and uh, get it out there um, and get live as quick as we can. A little bit of technical difficulties. I had to make a new stream. It was a bit of a clusterfuck for a bit there, but we made it work and we're here. And uh, every Wednesday we're drafting, um, starting to do some more uh, mock draft stuff. And that episode will come out soon. 
we'll do an episode or two where I'm not drafting probably once I, you know, max out this tournament and uh, we're just talking about draft needs, team needs, landing spots, things like that. Just going through depth charts, maybe. Um, and just kind of talking through some, some draft things. And then uh, we'll do the mock draft. And then we're right into best ball mania season. Uh, the schedule will come out. All kinds of fun. It's always football season. 365 days a year, realistically. Might get a couple days off. Enjoy my rosé. Hopefully you had a nice little beverage with me. Shout out to the chat. Putt Daddy, Vaporware. Always good to see you guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate the chatter. Appreciate the comments. There we go. 3683. I don't mind it. Probably not my favorite team, but probably not my least favorite team at the same time. So there you go. Long one tonight. A little long winded. <sighs> Stretch it out. That was a long episode. Appreciate you guys sticking with me. Um, appreciate you showing up. Hopefully you got something out of this episode. Uh, leave a comment after the fact. Again, hit that like and subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Hit me up on Twitter. If you have any questions or anything like that, uh, we'll be doing the mock draft in about three weeks, something like that, about week 10 days before the NFL draft. Like I always say on Off the Schneid, if you're afraid to be wrong, you'll never be right. Have a great night, guys. We'll see you next time.